Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, back with another video. So I get asked a lot of questions in regards to the gameplay and performance test videos I upload. Many people ask how I record my gameplay and, so and which what software I use, what settings I use, etc. Well today, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I record my gameplay. So if you're interested in recording your own gameplay, you can do that as well. With this method I'm going to show you, you can easily record your gameplay at 1080p 60fps. The quality looks absolutely amazing. And I just wanted to mention that the videos I actually upload have much better quality than what you see on YouTube, since YouTube compresses it so much. So the software that I use to record my gameplay is OBS, or Open Broadcast Software. It's an awesome program and you can download, download it for free from the OBS Project website. I'll have a link in the video description as to where you can find the software. So the version of the OBS that I use is OBS Studio. The reason why I chose uh, to use this version of OBS is because I really like the layout of this version and I feel that the settings and configuration menus are very convenient and straightforward. Now if you choose to use OBS Classic or already are using that instead, then don't worry because the settings I'm about to show you will also work with OBS Classic. So um, go ahead and open up OBS. So here at the bottom section you can see um, you have your section for scenes, your sources, mixer for your audio and microphone. So what, what you want to do is on the bottom right uh, on the bottom right click on settings. Once that opens you'll be brought to the general settings menu. You'll see some more tabs on the side that allow you to configure your stream, output, audio and video options. In the general options menu you can change your language to whatever you feel comfortable with. You can change the theme if you, as well if you'd like. I'm just going to leave this as is because this is what works for me. So I'm going to skip the stream option because in this video I'm only going to show you how you can record locally. So on the output on the left hand side of the menu, click on this and in the middle you'll see some more tabs. Click on the recording tab. Now here is where you'll configure your video quality settings, where your video will be saved and in what format. So right now I'm just recording, so this options are all grayed out, but this is pretty much all the options that you gotta have um, set as, so I'll go through this with you guys. So leave the type as standard. Your recording path is where your video will be saved once you're done recording, so you can click on browse and change the file path destination to whatever you want. For the recording format, it's really up to your preference as to what you're comfortable working with. I have the mp4 format selected since that is what I'm used to working with and can easily be imported into video editing software without any issues or the need to convert. You also need, uh, you can also change it to FLV. Now the advantage of using um, or selecting the format to F FLV will be that for some reason while you're recording gameplay or and if OBS software crashes, your computer crashes, the power goes off, basically anything that cuts off the recording. The FLV video file will be automatically saved up until the point that the recording was cut off from. This can be very convenient and this isn't the case with MP4 format files. With the MP4 for, uh, file video file, if the recording is cut off, then the whole video file will be corrupted and you won't be able to do anything with it. Now the drawback to using FLV is that if you want to use it in an editing software then you might have to convert it to another format such as mp4 since not every video editing software supports this format. Moving on, leaving the audio track checked at 1. If you want, if you have more then by all means you can select more. For the encoder I use Intel QuickSync. In my opinion Intel QuickSync works great and ever since learning about it this is what I've been primarily using. Now keep in mind that in order to use Intel QuickSync you'll need to have an Intel uh, processor with integrated graphics, which supports this feature. So if you have an Intel Xeon processor, this won't work. And obviously if, if you have an AMD processor, this won't work for you. So what is it about Intel QuickSync that makes it so great? Well, basically it's Intel's uh, hardware video encoding and decoding technology integrated into some of its CPUs. This encoder will take the job of encoding your stream from your CPU and use the Intel integrated graphics card instead. So this is really convenient because while you're recording it really takes a lot of the load off the CPU and GPU and will let, let the um, processor's integrated GPU handle everything. So therefore, this will lead to, very, lead to very minimal performance loss while you're playing your games. So for those of you that have an Intel processor from Sandy Bridge Architecture and onwards, paired with a discrete graphics card, in my case I have the R9 390, then you should definitely utilize Intel QuickSync technology. 
instead of the integrated graphics just sitting there not doing anything, you can uh, put it to good use. Now one important thing I want to mention to you that is that in order to use Intel QuickSync, you have to make sure that your processor's integrated graphics are enabled through the motherboard's BIOS. It may already be enabled for you and you might be able to select Intel QuickSync from this option here, but if it's not, then just go into your BIOS and enable it. Moving on to the bottom half this, uh, of, of the menu here, we have uh, things like profile, keyframe interval, rate control, key P, uh, the key P, I frame, P frame, and B frame. So for the rate control, I use uh, CQP um, because I I, I, it just, I just found that it works better for me rather than having a variable bit, bit rate or a constant bit rate, and have the QP frames all set to twenty. The 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 lower this the number is here, the higher the quality will be. So if you want if you want a better quality um, video, then you can lower this uh, lower these. But what I will mention to you is that uh, the higher quality video, the obviously the higher the file size will be. So just keep that in mind because as you're recording per second, it uh, really it really chews up a lot of uh, space in your hard drive. Also for the profile and keyframe interval, just leave these as is or set the profile to high. And if you want to uh, set it to zero, you can also do that for the keyframe interval. Now for the audio, I have my sample rate set as 48 kilohertz. And then for my desktop audio device, I have it set to my um, primary um, Asus Zonar DGX uh, audio device. This is the sound card or sound source that I pr uh, primarily use for my PC. And for the my, my microphone, I have my Blue Yeti microphone. Now, for the um, video settings, I have the base resolution set to 1920 by 1080 and the output scaled resolution to 1920 by 1080. So both of them, just keep them the same. Um, if you want, like if you want to downscale it to a lower resolution, like 720p for a lower file size or something, then you can always do that. But in this case, for 1080p, just keep these two the same. For the downscale filter, use bicubic. And for common FPS values, if you want 60 FPS video, then use 60. Uh, the reason why I use 60 is because the the footage looks amazing and it looks very smooth as well. So this pretty much covers um, as to as to what settings I have configured in OBS software. These settings will allow you to easily record 1080p 60 FPS footage, which looks amazing. I'm actually going to be linking a video down in the description below so you can download it and see for yourself how great the uh, recorded footage can be. Don't worry, it's not going to be so a big file. It'll just be a minute long, a minute or two long. So if you have a gaming rig with similar specs to mine, then I definitely recommend trying this method out. It will totally be worth it. Anyways guys, if you found this video helpful and informative, then hit that like button. Let me know any thoughts or questions down below in the comment section, and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching guys, take care and I'll see you in the next one.